welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a fun soap because I'm thinking of Oktoberfest. So I'm going to be making beer soap using this beer today. Uh, I'm going to pop the tops on these, put them in a saucepan, simmer them down to work out all the carbonation and boil off some of the alcohol. And then the fragrance that I'll be using to complement that is this uh, pumpkin cider from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Wow, this smells amazing. I mean, fantastic. Uh, and it says it does have some vanilla and says it discolors to tan and that's all fine and good. So um, I'm going to get my beer prepped. I don't freeze my beer in cubes. There's several different ways to approach a beer soap. Um, I've even seen people will just put it after they reach trace, kind of like a milk and oil method, and they'll just put it right into the batter, fully carbonated and have had no problems at all. But this is the way I do it because I like a lot of beer in my soap and using two of these um, I need to boil off the alcohol that's how I do it uh, some people will freeze it and use the cubes I'll bring you along and show you I make my lye solution with my beer I don't freeze it but I do boil it down um, so two beers are going in got the fragrance it's just gonna be so good I haven't pulled my colors yet I'm still thinking about it with the vanilla and how I want to approach this um, and I'll be making more beer soaps today too. I always like to have a couple of beer soaps come Oktoberfest time zone. I just, that just sounds good to me. And beer is great for your skin. So let me get everything pulled together and uh, I'll pick out my colors. We'll talk about the beer prep when we get to that step. So let's come back and make some beer soap. All right, it's time to pe prep my beer for beer soap. And I'm actually gonna do two different ones. I've got my, you lay, I don't know how to say this, yingling. <laughs> anyway, I, this is a great beer, my Oktoberfest, and I've got my Guinness over here. So two bottles are gonna go in each of these pots. I have my hot plate out, and I'm going to bring these up to a low simmer and just stir them and let the carbonation work out, let the alcohol simmer off. Then they will weigh them and see how much we have, and we'll move forward with the lye solution with the beer concentrate in there. But right now, gotta get these in the pots. These are probably twist off, but I have weak hands. Every time I do a twist off, it like hurts my hand. So I like my handy dandy opener. So these are obviously gonna be very fizzy and that's what I wanna reduce. And again, there's different ways to approach beer soap. This is how I do it. Um, I've had great luck and I get two whole beers and all the properties of the beer in here. So, so if you wanted to go very light and use like half a beer or a whole beer, um, you could just add it to the oils, like I said, or after trace. But I like all those hoppy, malty goodness. I think it's great for your skin. It makes a great lather. So two beers are what I like. For now, I've got to cook down some beer. Look at those two different colors. Isn't that awesome? All right, so here's the progress. It kind of looks still on top, but when I go in here and stir it, it'll still foam up. And if it does that, there's still a little carbonation left to work out. So that's what I'm looking at. And then it's not quite up to a simmer yet. And so I want a, a low simmer, not a boil, but just a simmer. And I'll let it simmer for a few minutes. You know, I'm not a stickler about getting all the alcohol out, but I want to get most of it out. And I definitely want the carbonation out of here. And then I'll just set these off to the side and let them cool. Obviously they have to cool back down. Sorry, as long as they're cooled off to room temperature, I can work with them in the lye solution, no problems. All right, let's weigh out our Oktoberfest beer here. After the cook down, it no longer has any fizz to it. So this started out as 12 ounces. So two of these would be 24 ounces before the cook down. Let's weigh it and see what we have after the cook down here. Sixteen point five ounces. So that's quite a bit of cook off. Um, just to know that if, when you are cooking down your beers, make sure you measure it afterwards because <laughs> that's a big difference. So I'm going to top the rest of this off with distilled water to get to the volume I need. And let's get to making soap. All right, I'm gonna prepare my beer lye solution now. So I've got the beers in here, a little distilled water, and to this I am going to add a little cane sugar. I debated about this because beer soap does have natural uh, sugars, even though I boiled off some of the alcohol. I'm not gonna do a full scoop. I'm gonna do that. This is about a tablespoon, is what I'm putting in here. Um, if you wanna add sugar or 
salt to your soap. Uh, you can do it at a rate of about a teaspoon per pound of oil. This is a good rule of thumb to follow. Um, I'm going shy on this because of the beer. Normally I do a heaping, this is a two tablespoon scoop. So I did not do that today because the beer is in there and you know things with sugars can heat up rather quickly. So uh, I'm getting that all dissolved in here. This is cool so it takes a little longer to dissolve the sugar, but it will dissolve eventually. I just kind of stir till I don't feel any grit on the bottom. And then I have my Tussa silk fibers here. So let me just show you these. And uh, I cannot tell you a weight because it weighs nothing, literally nothing. Even on a jewelry scale, this would not register. So um, it's less than a, I don't know, maybe a tiny cotton ball size. If you mash it up, it's like a very small cotton ball. So, uh, and you don't have to add this. I've had people ask me, why do you add the silk? It literally adds a silky feel to the lather. Totally not necessary. You make wonderful soap without this. I just love it and I have it, so I'm using it. <laughs> so, um, and if you are vegan, of course, you cannot use silk fiber, but I've heard of people using corn silk and having great results. So there are other options too. Um, but again, not necessary. This is just something I really like in my soap for the finished product. So I don't feel the sugar anymore. I'm gonna throw my little silk fluff in there and plop it down with the spatula. Okay, I have my sodium hydroxide, which is lye, all you know, measured off for the amount I need. And I'm just simply gonna add this slowly, okay? So just because the beer can heat up, um, it's not like adding it to milk where it can scorch. This isn't gonna scorch. It's already been to a boil on a stove top. So there's nothing in here really to scorch, but I just, you know, want to take it slowly and be respectful of all the natural sugars and things that are in there. And you don't want to breathe the fumes, stand back or have a mask or even better, a ventilating mask is, is a really smart idea if you've got that. Um, and I just, again, it's a feel. If you feel any grit on the bottom, just keep stirring until you don't feel the grit. Got a chunk there. And I'm just adding this in and it's gonna heat up as lye does. You can see the silk is already melted or melting. It melts very nicely in a very hot lye solution. And after I get all the lye incorporated and the silk is completely melted, I'm gonna go pop this in ice bath. There we go. I mean, that didn't take long. When I'm doing um, a full milk soap and I have frozen milk, you add lye much slower than I just did. <laughs> And you can see the steam coming off here. This is hot. So I'm gonna just get this last little bit of lye in here. And I'm gonna go pop this in an ice bath. And we will be back when it is cooled and we are ready to get moving on. Actually, this soap I'm gonna be splitting into four equal parts. I'm gonna split this up into four equal parts. I'm gonna split my oils into four equal parts. And we're gonna do some layers today with this Oktoberfest. The label colors are my inspiration. I just think those are the perfect harvesty colors. So that's my color inspiration. We're gonna split everything up. Anyway, let me go cool this off and we will come back to make soap. All right, we're back to put our soap additives in our oils here. But first, let me tell you the design again, this being the color inspiration, just cause aren't those just gorgeous colors? I love it. So what I have, was thinking is I already have the fragrance in here. I'm gonna split this oil into four different layers, like I said, with the lye. So I will mix this up in individual layers. And for the color, I'm going to use my organic turmeric powder, which is amazing. Um, and it doesn't stay this gorgeous color. It darkens up to kind of a beigey brown, not quite a pumpkin color. So to bump it up, I'm gonna add just a touch of my a, what is it? Adobe Orange Mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus. These two together, I'm hoping, will give me a somewhat rusty orange color like that. That is my goal. So I'm going to do some of the orange lines and then I will leave a portion uncolored because this fragrance does have vanillin and it discolors to a tan. I might throw just a touch of TD in there because I don't want it to go brown because I am also going to do not mica lines, cocoa powder lines. <laughs> I love my organic cocoa powder. And that's gonna be sort of the black hint, you know, how the 
I just thought it would punch the colors up to have a nice mica line. So cocoa powder line between the orange and the beigey cream color is what we're doing. And then I'll probably, I don't know what I'm going to do on top, just a scoopy or we'll see how the texture is when we get there. But fragrance is in here. Now let's add the additives. We've got the colloidal oats going in and the kale and clay. And of course the beer lye solution is up in its ice bath cooling off. So when everything's ready to go and split up, we will come back for our first layer. But right now let's get this blended. It's time for the first layer and I think I'll do orange first. So here's the turmeric. Isn't that gorgeous? So wonderful. All right, we're gonna do a scoop of that and then a scoop of the orange. And we'll see what that gets us for a color. Oh, that's a beautiful color. All right, so with the beer, the vanillin, and the fragrance, it's going to darken up. That is okay with me. So let's get our, this is a fourth of the oil, a fourth of the lye solution. Let's get our first layer poured.
All right, it's the next day, and I Googled how to pronounce this. It said Yingling. <laughs> so Yingling Oktoberfest. That's what we're doing. Let's take a look. Ta-da. Look how pretty that orange came out. This was just uh, the top little swirl was a little bit of the colored oils um, that I just did on top. And then as it saponifies, you can just do a mica in an oil on top and it will saponify with the rest of the soap. It's, it's just a little super fat up there. Isn't that pretty? All right, let's get in here and see how those layers came out. into these and I'm very anxious to see how that little um, frosting comb that's what that little tool is called that have the teeth on it it's called a frosting comb if you look for them on Amazon and uh, I don't know that was just a last-minute inspiration I thought oh I want to do something fun with these layers so oh I think they're gonna be cute I love it. It kind of looks like a little jack-o'-lantern teeth, doesn't it? Oh, this is fun. Love it. And this um, pumpkin cider fragrance, uh, really, really nice. And I love the colors. Here, let me grab my bottle again, and we can compare the color scheme. So this was the inspiration. And I think we got close. Um, this might darken up a little bit, but I'm not expecting too much discoloration. I think the color scheme, we got it though. Oh, I'm super tickled. These are fun. All right, let's get into our next loaf. And uh, those are just little sugar pearls on top. I just wanted them to look like carbonation fizz. So I thought they would be cute. I just want, I don't know. I just felt like adding them on there, like little bubbly fizzy. And I thought they, added a little something fun so let's see here oh golly i love these little um this looks very pumpkin-y jack-o-lantern so happy and being a beer soap uh these bars are going to lather like a dream i promise you uh, if you've never made beer soap or tried beer soap give it a try it's just fabulous Oh, I'm loving this. <laughs> That's just cracking me up. I don't know why. And I'm tickled with how the pumpkin color came out with that turmeric and the orange together. Loving it. All right. I'm going to keep cutting these. And like I normally do, I'm going to let them sit for a few hours so the surface area dries. And we'll come back in and bevel and stamp. And all the good stuff that goes into the bars. Thanks so much for joining me today. And if you enjoyed today's video, I hope you hit that subscribe button, bell for notifications, all that, and find me over on Instagram so you don't miss anything going on in the soap studio. And I hope you have a really wonderful day.